What's going on people? Driven Dynamic here. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about the front wheel drive platform. More specifically, um, just when it comes to driving in a spirited manner, driving a little bit faster, um, just understanding the dynamics of front wheel drive chassis and just how they work and just getting making the most out of this. This is more for like beginners or more for like street orientated cars as well. This is not for like race cars or anything. I'm not gonna be talking about aerodynamics. Oh, I might talk about wings, but that's as probably as far as I'll go. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not an expert by any means, but I've um, had this, this platform. I've been driving front wheel drive platforms for a little bit now. Been on the track a few times. Um, just kind of understood as I go learning, finding out what works, what doesn't work, things like that. And I've got a few things I can just give you a little few pointers on, or just a few tips, just to get you started out there when you want to start driving, or just things that, even if you already know, just kind of a little bit of a confirmation and whatnot. So, I'm here in my uh, 2500 Court Euro. I've got a LSD, a few goodies on here. So it's a, it's a good little car to drive. It's four door, weighs about 1400 kilos. It's a bit of a heavy car, but it's a great. A lot of stability. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so I wanna start talking first about understeer, right? Because obviously with front wheel drive chassis, that is generally the main, the main concern that people have is understeer. Um, so understanding understeer, I don't want to explain the basics. Look, we already know what understeer is. If you don't know what understeer is, do a little bit more research on this. This video might not be for you. But understanding the general concept of understeer, if you are suffering from understeer in a front wheel drive chassis, that is generally down to a few few main reasons, right? So it could either be your corner entry speed is just way too high. You're just entering these corners way too quickly and as a result you understeer because your entry speed is just too high um if it's not entry speed it's other reasons such as just the way the car is set up um it could be as simple as tires right tires are probably the most important aspect when it comes to driving um if you're driving with trash tires and you want to drive quickly it's, it's definitely not recommended and you're gonna the car just won't behave how you really want it to behave um, I'm currently running um, Nexon Surf 4G 200 Treadwear Semi Slicks. You don't have to run Semi Slicks. It's a little bit overkill for the street. It's great for the track, but for street use, it's not really necessary. You can get some high performance like Pilot Sport 4s or something. that it could just be the way the car is set up so generally if you want to promote if you want to kill understeer you want to be promoting oversteer right so essentially with modifications that you can do you can either um, you can probably stiffen up the rear stiffening the rear is the easiest way to then promote oversteer because I've personally got um, 22 mil progress rear sway bar Progress wrist way by I find it's quite good for um, it's getting that rear end to turn out a little bit. So it kicks the rear end rear, uh, rear end out for you. Um, that is one of my favourite mods that I've actually done to this car. As well as that, I've got um, oh, I don't want to go this way. There's too many cars. Um, I put also underbody bracing at the at the rear, just a four point underbody brace, just to kind of help stiffen up the rear a little bit more. Um, so that's another thing. I want to talk about corner, just corners in general as well. When you're um, when you're actually entering corners in a front-wheel drive chassis, you don't want to be flooring it throughout the corner the entire way. You can either like have the, let's say your pedals here, right? Having your like say a max is here. You want to be like maybe halfway between max whilst you're in a corner. Because what you find is that when you hit the corner too hard and you've got you're just foot planted on the ground, the car sometimes may not be able to get the power down. 
therefore it'll just be essentially understeering throughout the corner just because you're really trying to push the car and it just doesn't want to comply whereas if you have the uh the foot your foot just slightly planted just halfway through it makes it a lot easier for the car to actually um go through the corner definitely a lot less understeer that you'll suffer from and the car will just be a lot more delighted to actually get through the corner that way um Another thing as well, I want to talk about lift-off oversteer because on the contrary to um, understeer, we have oversteer which also does happen with front-wheel drive cars a lot and this is where wings come into play as well, I'll talk about wings a bit later on as well but um, lift-off oversteer, generally I've noticed it happens when either you brake too hard during a corner or you are essentially driving through a corner very hard and you've got your foot planted on the ground mid corner you let off the throttle and that unsettles the car and essentially the rear end then rotates um essentially you really don't want that to be unless you're you you directly want to lift over steer you you really shouldn't be doing that um you shouldn't be lifting lifting off mid corner because it really unsettles the car and um, the worst thing that you can do and, and some people will do is they'll brake as the rear end starts to rotate and you can really get into some serious trouble doing it that way you, you end up braking mid corner and uh, you have serious issues the best way to, to mitigate lift off oversteer is to obviously not lift off mid corner try slow down your entry try go a little bit slower where you don't have to lift off during corner and you can kind of as I said earlier keep your foot around about halfway keep it there but don't really floor, floor it through the corner oh it's a pretty nice car but let's say you do lift off oversteer right the best way to obviously counteract that is by counter steering let's say for example my rear end goes out like this the back end the rear back end kicks out what I can do is obviously um, feed into that and then just turn my wheel into the slide but what I don't want to do I don't want to when I feel the car start to, to straighten out I don't want to still have my wheel turned this way because what will happen is if I still have my wheel turned this way whilst the car is correcting the, you will overcorrect. so essentially you'll, you'll, you'll correct the car but now the car's straight and my wheel is still turned this way what's going to happen I'm going to start going the other direction and you see a lot of dash cam footage of people um, they overcorrect something happens on the road someone will be driving like a Toyota Camry or something they overcorrect they overcorrect again and that's how they, they fuck up right so essentially you want to make sure that as soon as you feel the car start to um, correct itself, what you want to do is once that car, you feel the car starts to straighten out, you want to make sure that your wheel is also straight again. So that the car, the only way the car is going to go is in the direction that you want it to. Let's say maybe it's a, um, it's a little bit of a corner like this. You want to obviously correct and make sure that the, the wheel is pointed in the direction of where the car needs to go. So that's a few things. Now, when I talk about wings as well, right? There's a common misconception, people saying that, ah, oh, you know, front wheel drive, you don't need a wing for a front wheel drive car. You know, there's no point of having a front wheel drive car with a wing on it, blah, 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 blah. People, people that say that don't have any idea of what they're talking about. Let's just do a quick one. As I was saying, a wing on a front wheel drive car can be very useful. As, as I was talking about earlier, stiffening the rear end of a car to help promote um, oversteer, there can sometimes be a point where if you're constantly driving the car in a manner where you're lifting off and whatnot and braking, and you, it, it'll just induce a lot of oversteer, especially on lighter cars. 
especially on um, like small cars with very small wheelbases, they are a lot more prone to um, oversteer in that sense. So it can actually help having a wing on a, fr on a front wheel drive car as it will then help balance out the rear end. It'll help add weight to the rear with obviously drag and whatnot and aerodynamics helping to actually keep the car stable on the ground. Um, there was there is a there's a few videos out there. Um, I think it was by Hot Version, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, of them on Cooper Circuit with a um, Honda Civic, and they did a few runs with the obviously with the wing on, and the car was pretty stable. But once they actually took the wing off, they found that the car was just constantly oversteering, spitting out on some parts as well, just because of how how oversteery the setup was, and obviously having the wing at the rear help with that. So having a rear wing can actually be helpful. It's just, you know, some some cars just don't need it. You know, like I, I, I generally feel like I don't really need a wing for my car because it's a longer wheelbase. It's pretty stable for the most part. But I did find on track there was a few moments where I did feel the rear end kicking out a little bit and felt like, okay, maybe I could use a wing, but for the most part, I, I don't really need it. So overall, those are a few things that you need to understand when driving a front-wheel drive chassis. Um, obviously, there's understeer, there's oversteer in all applications. This is specifically with front-wheel drive cars. Um, and so I hope this is like a helpful guide to just kind of understanding your platform. So that's mainly some key points that you guys just, just should know. Um, if you found this video helpful, obviously be sure to like subscribe if you haven't already i've been putting out way more content similar to this and i hope you guys uh, enjoy this little short informative video anyway it's been your boy driven dynamic i'll catch you guys in the next video peace oh my goodness